What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here, PackersNews.com. Late in the afternoon on Tuesday, the Packers have kicked off their off-season program, complete with player availability, including one Aaron Charles Rodgers, uh, speaking to the media earlier this morning, along with Jimmy Graham, Tremont Williams, David Bakhtiari, HaHa Clinton Dix. But of course, the one making the headlines is Mr. Aaron Rodgers, um, Responding somewhat to the Yahoo report that was out this morning that we mentioned in Morning Buzz um, about Aaron Rodgers being unhappy and frustrated with the Packers. Um, obviously, he shot that down publicly uh, and then went on to Twitter and uh, took a shot at Charles Robinson in the process, the writer of the Yahoo article. And now here we are, late in the day, and there's a ton of a content up from the you offseason know, program starting. Uh, lots of stuff on the draft. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com each and every day for the next nine days leading up to the draft and then throughout the draft as it's happening. Um, and thanks to everyone jumping on here. Spencer, that's very nice of you to say. I don't think you're right. but Nick says, glad Rogers shut down the frustration BS. I will say it was very smart of him to not only speak today, but to put out that tweet because now it will be included in everything that is written about and pontificated about this story for the next, you know, 12 hours before we dive into tomorrow's news cycle. But uh, it's really smart on Roger's part to get out and, and make sure his side of things are put out in t for public consumption uh, when the story is being talked about. I'll only say, I don't buy for a second that Charles Robinson is just making this up. You know, don't forget back in the day when... Ted Thompson missed out or refused to trade for Randy Moss. Brett Favre uh, you know, demanded a trade and uh, then went on to say that he never made any such demand. All the while, he had. I'm not saying that Rodgers is... I don't think Rodgers has lied about anything. Um, I think he's been completely honest. I think he was very honest in his uh, um, availability today with all the questions he was asked. But I also don't for a second think that there isn't something to Charles's story this morning. Uh, Brajar Breeland to the Packers. There we go. Now, now we're asking some, some football questions. Um, you know, I well, I would doubt. I tend to doubt it, but you know, you, you can never say never, especially now that we have a new general manager in place. If this was Ted Thompson and operating still at twelve sixty five Lombardi, I would say I would just simply say no. But um, with Gutekunst. Can't shut the door on it. Landry's still your cho first choice, Aaron. Uh, Dale, I would say he's my first choice when it comes to, you know, if they are looking at 14 as, as they have to get a pass rusher, I think he's their best shot. I don't think Chubb will be available. Uh, maybe, you know, there's a jump up for Chubb at some point if they deem it uh, prudent. But uh, for the guys they could realistically get at 14, um, you know, if they prioritize pass rush, I think Landry makes a lot of sense. Is it po possible that we pick at 14 and then trade back into the end of the first round? Absolutely. Um, again, I can't say what percentage that, uh, that might be that they would make that kind of a move, but you can't discount it. You can't throw away the possibility. The fact that they have so much draft capital, more picks than anybody else in this draft with 12, including the pick at the start of the third day, it gives them a lot of maneuverability, a lot of points on the draft trade chart. Um, they can make a move like that if they find a guy that they really like dropping down there into that, say, maybe they have a first round grade on who's dropping late into the first and they think they can go get. And they want to double up like that with first round picks. Absolutely a possibility. Hypothetically, if Barkley falls to eight, would you trade up? No, not for a running back. Um, I had someone ask me if I'd trade up for Nelson today. I wouldn't do that either. And I think he's probably the best player in this draft, pound for pound, but I wouldn't trade up for a guard either. But, yeah, I, I would have real problems pulling the trigger on that. I know Barkley is a talent. There's no doubt about it. Um, but I would, have, I would have a hard time using extra draft capital to go get a running back, no matter how talented he is. And Barkley clearly is talented. Would Chark be a reach in the early of the second round? No, I don't think so. Um, I think once you get past right around the 20 mark, um, the top 20 prospects say, you know, the the, the difference in talent level um, from pick 25 to pick 50 is is 
I'm not going to say minimal, but it, the, the gap closes significantly. Um, I, I think Chark would make a lot of sense in Green Bay. He would bring an element that they've lacked for a long time as far as a, a truly explosive vertical threat um, and just flat-out speed, um, but also ability. Um, you know, Obviously, Trevor Davis was drafted because of his speed, but he hasn't brought much as actual, with actual ability uh, from scrimmage. Um, I think Shark would definitely add that instantly. What do you think of, about Rodgers being upset with them not consulting him on things? Um, I talked about it a little bit at the top of the video. I'll just say I, I think there's probably a grain of truth there to what Charles Robinson wrote for Yahoo. Um, I think Rodgers did a really good job this morning talking to the media and getting his side out there, especially wanting to get it in during the news, you know, this current news cycle. Um, but I, I understand his frustrations. I mean, guy's been there a long time. He's seen a lot of friends come and go. Um, he's clearly, I mean, they've now gone without him for extended stretches twice and looked pretty miserable both times doing so. Um, it's pretty clear that uh, he's kept a lot of people employed. He's kept a lot, he's elevated a lot of people to other jobs outside that building. And he's been underpaid for a good part of the time that he's been doing it. So you throw that all together and... You know, I don't think it's outrageous that a human would sit there and go, you know what, all these things going on that affect me, that are of consequence to my performance on the field, not only, you know, uh, winning football games, but, you know, being a leader on the team, um, being a leader in the locker room that everyone looks to. I don't think it's completely crazy that Aaron Rodgers would want more say. On the flip side, I also don't think it's crazy for the Packers to say, thanks, but no thanks. I don't think it's nuts for uh, Brian Gutekunst, Mark Murphy, you know, to say we're going to make our decisions and then we will tell you about them, but we're not going to consult with the quarterback. Uh, I think that's a slippery slope. We've seen, um, you know, we've seen kind of that movie before when Mike Sherman was in town with Brett Favre. I just don't think, you know, I think it's like I said, I think it's a slippery slope that the Packers are wise to avoid. Um, yeah, my caption's all screwed up. That's just the way life works. We'll fix it in post. Any idea of timeline to revisit signing Breland? Um, you know, it really depends on his medical and not having any kind of, not being privy to any of that information, it's hard to say. Is Landry really a better pick than Davenport? I think so. I know there are plenty of people who would disagree. Um, I tend to think Davenport, while uh, definitely athletic and has upside off the charts. I think he's incredibly raw. I mean, it would take a while for the Packers to see a return on that investment. I think Landry would come in and, and not only help the team right away, but I think he'd be a, a, a very good pass rusher. Um, and I also worry about Davenport being a bit of a media creation. Um, you know, I think his people have done a really good job of getting his name kind of in the slipstream, so to speak, when it comes to... Uh, mention um, you know, media wise. I mean, we don't really know what teams think of these guys, but uh, he's a guy who, whose stock really suddenly kind of shot up right around, I guess about prior to the senior bowl or around the senior bowl, which always makes you think, wait a second, you know, what's going on there? But, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not saying he's not talented. He's incredibly talented and he's got upside for days, but to me, I would prefer Landry, but Hey, I'm not in charge. Thankfully for you guys. You think Anthony Miller will be there at 45? He's going to be a stud. Um, yeah, I think there's a chance he's there. Uh, obviously, a very different receiver from what we were talking about with DJ Shark. Uh, but I think he's he looks like a Packer. You know, uh, he looks like the guy that they could line up outside. A big guy who can run a slant with the best of them. Um, yeah, he looks like a Packer receiver. It wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the pick at 45. Thoughts on Leighton Vander Esch? Um, I keep reading things about, uh, you know, conflicting things about his medical, about people being concerned and then people dismissing it, um, particularly about the neck, which is always, you know, it's always tricky when you're dealing with necks and heads. Uh, yeah, I think you look, you turn on the tape, you see a lot you're going to like. Um, I think he could help the Packers. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about it at 14, though. That seems a little rich for my blood. But again, that's just a personal opinion. Will you be stuck in traffic in Dallas next week? Thankfully, no, because I'll be in Green Bay. Um, when I took this job, 
you know, we kind of hemmed and hawed about whether I should be at the draft site or in Green Bay. And we decided that I get more use uh, out of me <laughs> when I'm uh, in Green Bay, attending to the team, you know, all the media availability that's there, um, rather than, you know, go to wherever the draft is being held and maybe a guy they draft is there. Um, I know Kevin King was there. And, uh, you know, they've, I was there when Brian Belager got drafted at Radio City all those years ago. Uh, I was there when Randall Cobb got drafted. But, you know, I think you just you can get a lot more done on site than you can where the, wherever the draft is. What's up with reporters putting words in Aaron Rodgers' mouth? I'm going to have to disagree with your police work there. I don't see anyone putting words in Rodgers' mouth. Um, I saw a report from Yahoo this morning, which referenced people, uh, sources close to Rogers, but I didn't see anything about Rogers, um, saying specific things. I mean, I'm just telling you what I read. <laughs> Harold Andrea 14, Marcus, I think it makes a lot of sense. Do we trade back if all the guys that we like are there at 14? It's possible. I tend to think they'll pull the trigger on, on... The player they like the most, but you know, if they truly have, say, really similar grades on a bunch of different guys, it makes sense to drop back a little bit. I wouldn't think they should drop back too far, but heck, maybe there's a quarterback somebody wants to come up and get that's starting to slide, or you know, maybe it takes a you got to find a dance partner. But um, you can't rule it out. Like I said, I tend to think they'll make that selection at 14, but you never know. I mean, it really depends on how the board falls. Good Fargo reference. I, it's one of my favorite phrases. I use it all the time. The rest of the crew lives in Wisconsin. Or where do they live? Yeah, they all live in Wisconsin. So glad Jermon is back. Need his leadership. Uh, he was excellent with reporters today. There's no doubt about that. Um, I did love him saying, you know, there's no question they brought me back to help lead these young guys and teach them how to be pros. But they also brought me back because I can still play. And that's the truth. And anybody who watches his tape from last year knows that that's the case. Is Josh Jackson slightly overrated since all his production came in one year? Yeah, that I'm not going to say he's overrated. I think the tape, you know, tells you what he is. He's a really good long press man guy who clearly had a lot of production this year. Um I think he's going to be a good NFL player. I'm not sold that he's going to be a true number 1, a guy that you can just kind of set it and forget it on the outside there. But I do think he's going to be a good player. Now, is he worthy of the 14th overall pick? I don't know. That's for the Packers to determine. That might be a bit rich for my blood, but we'll see what they have to say. Could the Packers sign Decker or another vet free agent? They could. I would suspect they don't. They've had a really long, successful track record of developing wide receivers through the draft. Given all the you know, variations, everything they do at the line of scrimmage, um, all the checks, all the stuff they have to be in sync with when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. You know, I know they've gone out the last three offseasons and gotten a tight end in free agency and receiving tight ends at that. But they very rarely, if ever, venture into free agency to get wide receivers. And I think part of that is because of the complexity of the offense. They want guys who've come up through their system. So I tend to think they'll look at the draft. They'll look probably on day two, um, if not a few other times, uh, to draft a few guys and count on some development from within rather than going and spending free agency dollars outside the building. Now I say that and heck, they could sign Eric Decker tomorrow, but my hunch is that's the way they'll go. What's left for cap room, Mike, uh, they're hovering around 15 million, I believe. They'll need three or four of that to sign the rookie class. Um, but right now sitting around 15. Will they sign any more free agents before the draft? It's a possibility. Uh, they signed um, Jari Evans last year, the day before the draft. So, you know, Charles Woodson was signed the week of the draft. It's always a possibility. Think there's any chance they trade up into the top 10 with all the picks they have? There's a chance. There's no doubt about it. It all depends on you know, who Gutekunst loves. If someone kind of falls to 8, 9, 10, that he has a, you know, a huge out of this world grade on, and he knows he's got the capital capital to go get him, thinking he probably won't be there at 14. Uh, he has, you know, the ability to do so. Now, who that guy might be, I have no idea. But uh, you'd be foolish to rule it out. 
Would Fitzpatrick be Micah Hyde 2.0? I saw that comparison made by the guys over at Packers Wire. Um, I get what they're saying in regards to his versatility. Uh, you know, obviously they'll be running in different schemes. Uh, Fitzpatrick will be walking in a Petten scheme, whereas Hyde was playing with Capers. Um, but, uh, you know, I just on the versatility, I think Fitzpatrick's a much more athletic guy. Um, I think he can be a lot more disruptive around the line of scrimmage than Hyde ever was. But I get what they're saying with that uh, comparison, and I think th in the uh, with the idea that you know he can be multifaceted and do a lot of different things for the Packers, I think that comparison is apt. Chance Raji will be there at fourteen. Pretty good, Cody. Pretty pretty good. We don't need to get into the top ten. We need another first round pick, Mandy. I think that's one way to go. We talked about that earlier in the. In the video, uh, it's every possibility that they make the selection at 14 and then try and jump back into the bottom of the first round. I think that's just as likely as them trading up into the, the 10th overall spot. <laughs> A lot of people saying Dez is coming to Green Bay. Just watch. All right, man, I'm keeping my eyes open. Did you pay your taxes, Aaron? Now, there's a question. Yes, Jared, my wife and I filed, um, I think, late Sunday night. Uh, who is the best draft eligible punter this season? Whew, that's a good question. I don't know because I think Justin Vogel is the got that job locked up. That's just me. Uh, do you think the Packers take a defensive back that's under their threshold in the first or second? You know what? I've been wondering about that, especially when it comes to Mike Hughes. Um, I know I've, I've got a lot of questions about Jari, uh was it Alexander. I don't see that, but I tell you what, Mike Hughes could be the guy. He doesn't, he doesn't, he just, he comes in just under the height threshold, but his tape is so good, and you got to think they, if they really want that press man corner on the perimeter, oh man, he'd be tempting. So if there's a target maybe to jump back into the bottom of the first round, he might be it, but it would, it would take a lot of, uh, I don't know, not a lot of gumption, but it would... You know, it would definitely be going against the, the wolf thresholds for height. <laughs> Dez still didn't catch it. I definitely agree. Do we draft a running back? Um, I think if there's one that falls, that they have a high grade on, kind of like the Eddie Lacy situation a couple years ago when, you know, they didn't expect him to be there, but he kept dropping and kept dropping into the late second, and they figured the value was too good to pass up. If something like that happens then maybe. But I don't think they're going to go in looking to draft a running back. Um, make sure you check out Michael Cohen's uh, piece at PackersNews.com. Um, both He looks at both the running back situation in Green Bay and then they kind of, you know, an overlook of who they might look at in the draft. Does Michael does a really good job laying that all out for you. PackersNews.com, check that out. Could you see the Packers drafting Griffin? Uh, Sean, Shaquille Griffin, uh, for those of you who don't know... Uh, UCF linebacker slash safety who uh, had his hand amputated at a young age, uh, played at a high level in college and wowed everybody with his work at the combine. So he's definitely put his name on the radar, so to speak. I'm interested to see if he gets drafted at all. Um, would the Packers draft him? It's definitely a possibility. The, the man's tape is good. And like I said, he knocked it out of the park in, in Indy. And apparently the, the word was is that his interview was great. You know, the teams that met with him loved him. So, yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah, I know, obviously, teams are going to have questions about the about the hand or lack thereof. Um, they're going to have to deal with those questions and how they think he might be able to be productive in the NFL. But, man, he's too athletic, and he's been too productive against high-level competition for you to completely dismiss him as a prospect. And I think that will get him drafted. Do you think C.J. Anderson to Green Bay? No, I don't see them spending any kind of money in free agency for a running back. Who's going to be our punt returner? TBD. Uh, Trevor Davis obviously is still on the roster, as is Randall Cobb, who has experience there. I tend to think they'll probably draft somebody uh, with the idea of bringing in competition for the punt return job in the hopes that someone takes it. <laughs> I think the Packers should play more 80s hair metal between them. That's outstanding. Hey, man, if you've been to Lambeau Field, you know they're, they are stuck in a bit of a time warp when it comes to their music. Um, are they waiting to extend Rodgers before going back into free agency? No, they have 
they have space. They have $15 million or so in cap space left to make any kind of moves they want. Um, yeah, no, I don't think Rodgers' contract is having much bearing on their free agency decisions. Um, you know, Rodgers talked about it today. There's definitely mutual interest. Things are slow going. Um, I wouldn't expect a deal to get done anytime soon. Uh, you know, I've been saying pretty much every time I've been asked here on Facebook, I I would expect it to get done late in the summer, probably right before camp. That's just a guess. But uh, like I said, I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. Um, who has more TDs this season, Graham or Adams? Whew, Joe, that's a really good question. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Adams. Do you think we need a DB or a pass rusher more right now? Pass rusher. I've been saying that all off season. Hell, I've been saying it for the last three off seasons, but. They don't listen to me. Uh, we need a Darren Sproles like back, small, fast, and shifty. Norman, it's funny. Uh, Michael Cohen mentioned that in a video we did a couple days ago, and it's something that I've you know talked about, whether it was here at PackersNews.com when I was at Cheesehead TV, when I was at Bleacher Report, when I was at Sports Illustrated. I've been saying this for a long time that the Packers should bring in somebody like that. Hell, this goes back to when Greg Bedard was covering the team, which was a long time ago. We used to have back and forth about how, you know, Aaron Rodgers would be helped by having like a darting presence in the backfield, third down back, scat back, etc. But it really hasn't been their MO at all. Now, maybe they break with that tendency this offseason with the new general manager, but it really hasn't been the way they've operated. Uh, they like their bigger guys, sturdier, able to withstand uh, whatever punishment being dished out. Um, mutters who can get through the, the bad weather and the late in the season in Lambeau. But I'm with you. I think that type of back would do wonders for the Packers. Philip Lindsay. Uh, Jake, that's somebody that Michael mentioned, actually. How come when you were talking about Packers, Mount Rushmore, Bart Starr didn't get a mention? Uh, I, because I didn't need to... Because people were mentioning him, and I was pushing back on whichever people they were omitting. Um, a lot of people included Star, so that's why I didn't really need to talk about it. But, yeah, Bart Star has to be in the conversation, right? As does Brett Favre, as does Ron Wolf, as does Bob Harlan, as does Curly Lambeau. Um, you know, the list goes on. It's simply impossible to name just four people and put them on a Packers Mount Rushmore. That was my only point. Uh, schedule release, Richard, uh, I believe it's going to be Thursday night. It could be Wednesday night, but I haven't seen anything. Usually they put something out 24 hours beforehand. That hasn't happened today, so I suspect Thursday night. TBD. All right, everybody, I'm going to jump, but uh, thank you so much for jumping on here and talking Packers with me. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question. They do come by fast and furious, especially when there are 500 people here. It's amazing. Um, thanks, everyone. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. We have everything from... Uh, Aaron Rodgers, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, David Bakhtiari, Tremont Williams, they were all talking today. Um, we got stuff about the draft. We got running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers. It's all up there. Make sure you're checking it out. Until tomorrow, guys, have a great night.